Yes, hi, bonjour tout le monde, hi everybody. Uh, very happy to, to open this workshop and to welcome all of you uh, in CRFG here, uh, Shimshon, Shimshon Baka, and uh, via Zoom also. Um, very happy because, because yes, uh, there is many friendly faces uh, around the table in, 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 front, in front of us uh, on the Zoom uh, screen. But more than that, because, uh, because of the very issue of this uh, workshop, the les archives de Jean Perrault, the archives of Jean Perrault. Uh, this workshop is really situated at the crossroad of several dynamics and energies and projects that are uh, actually that are actually launched uh, in the CRFG. First, this workshop is organized in the framework of the Structuring Interdisciplinary CRFG Workshop, Retour aux Sources, Back to the Source, Back to the Sources, which was launched uh, in May two, 2020, so one year ago, uh, by uh, Estelle ingrand varenne and Julien Vieuguet. Uh, I remember that they were in the, in the, in the flight mm -hmm. back to France. It was the, you remember the first, uh, <laughs> the premier confinement. Uh, and, uh, and they had the idea uh, of, this, uh, of this workshop because precisely because of the context of the pandemic situation, we had, we had and we have still problematic access to the sources and, and, to the, and to the data. And so they thought and we thought that it, it was precisely, it is precisely the, the good moment to rethink our uh, methodological position uh, concerning the archival issues of our fields and of our uh, uh, works. And so today it is the, the sixth session of this uh, workshop, back to the, to the sources, and we can say without uh, any chance mistake that it will continue uh, after, after uh, this uh, session. And uh, second, secondly, uh, I must underline that this workshop is also following uh, the huge work which was launched by my uh, predecessor, not Jean Perrault, but François Bon, uh, my direct predecessor, uh, François Bon, alias uh, Le Bon François, uh, who, who is here, uh, concerning the reorganization and the storage and the ranking of the CRFG archives. And so it, it is, of course, it is, uh, it is a workshop of, about the archives of Jean Perrault, but uh, thanks to the work launched by uh, another director, uh, uh, François Bon. And of course, it was a collective work and uh, François Bon uh, launched this uh, huge uh, work with the, the help of Yann Potin, who is here, and Chloé Ronner, uh, she's uh, with us uh, at CRFG, and with the decisive support of uh, Fanny Bocantin, who will uh, continue the work precisely about the archives of Jean Perrault. Thank you so much, Fanny, for the work. I remember the work you launched with Julien uh, one, one year and a half ago, I think, uh, uh, downstairs. <laughs> I remember it. And uh, so there is next steps uh, in, in front of us. And this work was uh, done in the framework of our uh, very rich and, and, and uh, uh, our very rich partnership with um, uh, MAE, uh, MSH Monde, and, uh, and especially Elisabeth Belon, uh, who is uh, here. And with the support of uh, Anne-Yvonne Guillou, uh, I had the call with uh, Anne-Yvonne uh, uh, last week, and uh, she she confirmed that that the MSH Monde uh, will continue the the partnership uh, between uh, CRFG and MSH Monde concerning precisely the the archival issue of uh, of this uh, very institution. And last but not least, I would like to thank warmly and deeply, of course, Julien Vieuguet uh, for all the incredible work that he has done uh, downstairs. Uh, during the, these difficult uh, months that uh, 
that we that we had about and around the paper archives. And today we had the project with Julien to organize an official uh, inauguration of this new archaeology department, 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 yes. department d'archaeology. <laughs> Uh, but we had to postpone it uh, next year because, yes, the situation is better, not that easy to, to come from abroad and so for uh, having, uh, having champagne and so on, it was better to postpone it uh, maybe in September or, or uh, October. And this, uh, yeah, this inauguration will be the celebration of all the work launched by uh, Francois again and finalized by uh, Julien Vieuguet and, and I'm sure that all of you will, uh, will be happy to, to participate. Many thanks again to, to you all. Uh, I'm sure that you will have an excellent workshop. I hope, of course, to welcome you again personally here at, uh, at CRFG in the coming, uh, coming months. Merci beaucoup. Julien. Hello, good morning, everybody. So <clears throat> I am also very happy to be to be here for this workshop dedicated to to Jean Perrault's archives. So I would like first to thank as well uh, all the scientific and administrative members of the French Research Center in Jerusalem, uh, in particular Vincent, uh, Estelle, and as well Liz, who helped uh, a lot for the organization of this uh, of this uh, workshop. So in the introduction, I will uh, not speak a lot about Jean Perrault because, uh, of course, it's very difficult to, to summarize uh, his life in five minutes. And as well, I should say I'm probably not the best one to speak about Jean Perrault because uh, when I started to work in Israel in 2014, uh, unfortunately, Jean Perrault was already died and I sadly never had the opportunity uh, to meet him. Uh, but I will anyway uh, say some words and why we decided to organize this workshop about uh, Jean Perrault's uh, archives. So Jean Perrault is, uh, of course, a leading figure of prehistoric uh, archaeology in the Near East. And yesterday when I, when I spoke with Isaac, he said to me, Jean Perrault was a big boss. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think uh, actually at that time, uh, he, he was a very leading figure of uh, prehistoric archaeology. So in Israel, actually, between the 50s and the 70s, he excavated uh, very important uh, epipaleolithic sites, such as uh, Malaha, but as well Neolithic sentiment, such as uh, Abu Ghosh, Fay Simon, and Hunhata. And of course, uh, very uh, significant calculitic sites, uh, such a, as uh, Abu Mata or uh, BRS Safadi. So I would say Jean Perrault at that time contributed significantly to the development of large scale uh, systematic uh, excavation. But not only, he also, as you know, founded the French Research Center in Jerusalem in 1952. And it was the first uh, uh, CNRS laboratory abroad, and now there is 27 uh, UMIFR. Uh, so, of course, uh, Jean Perrault was very important uh, for the CNRS regarding the international research. And he also created, uh, for example, in collaboration with Bernard van der Mersch, uh, the Paleo Orient Journal uh, in 1973, uh, which is dedicated to the prehistory and proto history of the Southwestern Asia. So, so of course, Jean Perrault was a very, uh, very important uh, uh, archeologist and uh, also diplomatic person, I would say. Uh, such a very active life, we can say that, uh, triggered a unique scientific and administrative documentation that remained greatly unexplored because I would say, unfortunately, Jean Perrault did not publish a lot. In the framework of several research projects, some scientists started to explore Jean Perrault's archives in order to answer some uh, uh, current issues in prehistory, uh, such as the place of the date in the Natufian or the emergence of pottery during the seventh millennium Calvici, but as well some current issues in history, uh, such as the development of archeological institutes after the creation of the Israeli state uh, in 1948. 
So the main objective of this workshop is to promote the discussion about this fascinating ongoing research by bringing together anthropologists, historians, and archaeologists who are currently working on Jean Perrault's archives. So we will have today six uh, presentations. Uh, the first one by Gwendoline Tortera, Adrien Delvoix, and Nejma Goutas, who will uh, uh, actually uh, um, present, do a presentation entitled From Yesterday to Today, The Making of Prehistory. And they will present the future research that will be developed within the framework of the future UMR temps. So UMR, it means laboratory. <laughs> Um, then Elisabeth Belon, Julie Besnet, and Erwan Legueux will, um, will provide an overview of Jean Perrault's archives, which are currently stored at the MSH Mont in Nanterre. Chloé Rosner, who is, who is historian, uh, will, uh, present his, uh, will present our research about Jean Perrault and his influence on the Israeli uh, archaeology. And then we will have uh, three contributions of uh, archaeologists. One by uh, Fanny Bocantin and collaborators uh, who will present uh, their ongoing uh, fascinating research uh, on the, the famous Natufian site of Malara. Uh, Julie Bessonnet, Elisabeth Belon, and myself will present an, on an ongoing study on the archives of Jean Perrault's excavation at Munchata. And at the end, uh, Isaac Gilad uh, will do a presentation entitled Les Carrés de Jean digging and recording the Beersheva Calcolytic site. I should say I really love this title because Isaac is, is the only one who is not native French speaker, native uh, French speaker, and he wrote his title in French. <laughs> so we can, we can see the influence of uh, Jean Perrault on, the, on the, the Israeli archeologist. And at the end, we will have a final di discussion uh, with François Bon and Jan Potin, and I'm sure it will be, uh, it will be very, very fascinating with, with both of them. I'm sure we will have an uh, interesting exchange. So I will, um, I will uh, immediately give, uh, so the, we will start directly the, the seminar with uh, Gwendoline, Adrien, and Nejma. Uh, if, you can, if you can share your your screen okay just let me try uh it looks like the uh, the sharing of screen is not activated yet for participants uh, it will arrive now you can okay Okay, that's okay. So can you just widen it a bit? Okay, that's good. And I give the word to a uh, rendering with stops. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you to Julian for the invitation to participate in this seminar. Uh, today, the archival treatment of Jean Perrault's research fits perfectly into one of the themes of the future uh, UMR temps of the CNRS, which results from the merger of two French research uh, structures, the prehistoric ethnology team of the OSCON laboratory and the prehistory and technology laboratory. One of the structuring uh, themes of the prehistoric ethnology team is dedicated to history, epistemology, and valorization, which in the framework of the future laboratory has been renamed history, sociology, and anthropology of prehistoric archaeology due to broad um, broadening of our multidisciplinary approaches to other human and social sciences. Within this stem, one sub -tem is in particular will be discussed here its title is also the title of our intervention from yesterday to today, the making of prehistory and exploration of archives, collections, ethnographic and ethno-historical resources. 
Um, it currently brings together 26 collaborators from different backgrounds, universities, CNRS, culture, national education, in rap, etc. Its aim is to highlight certain blind spots linked to the production of knowledge in prehistoric archaeology in France and abroad. We consider here the historical roots of this knowledge from the 19th century to its recent past, mid 20th century, but also the multiple ways of putting archaeology into practice today. A return to primary sources as well as a reflexive and critical look at the Lato Sensu archives, uh, textual, iconographic, audiovisual, uh, makes it, uh, it possible to recontextualize uh, and re exploit the data from our syntax relations. These data are revelated in the light of current scientific issues, as well as the excavation and analysis methods that address them. And this, um, this subtime we present you today is also concerned with the history of ancient collections and their archives, sometimes often dispersed at the whim of various events, but also their scientific valorization and their restitution to the scientific community. The chaotic history of a certain collection has revealed a way of doing archaeology for a very long time and has caused um, sometimes an erosion of heritage and memories as well as an uh, often damaging loss of uh, scientific information, sometimes leading to error or dead hands in interpretation. Uh, so today's archeologists cannot however claim to be able to overcome this risk uh, once and for all. This is why we wish to promote a detailed analysis um, by the social sciences of the scientific practice linked to this study uh, of the past and of what they teach us about the, the world of research in prehistory today as in the past. So to illustrate our objectives, we choose three examples of uh, ongoing or planned research uh, on various types of archive. And so we will discuss uh, this one here. And the first one will present the results uh, obtained in the framework of a multidisciplinary approach on different types of archives in connection with a major site uh, of uh, European prehistory, Arcy sur Cure, uh, in northern France. The second example we choose uh, will deal with specific uh, oral archives produced in the social sciences and their contribution to the understanding of archaeological narratives from an epistemological perspective. And finally, the third example will discuss the particular problem linked to the archives of excavation or ethnographic research produced during the colonial and post-colonial era in West Africa. So here the aim is mainly to illustrate uh, research perspectives. Uh, we are uh, now going to present the result uh, created uh, in the framework of recent projects on the archaeological site of Arcy sur Cure and more broadly, the RC Saint-Mauré Massif. As colleague Nejma Gutas uh, is unable to be here today, I will play the ventriloquist uh, on her behalf. The RC sur Cure Saint-Mauré Massif, located in Bourgogne, in the Cure Valley, is one of the richest areas of prehistoric occupation in the Bassin Parisien. Excavated for more than a century, there are currently about 15 caves and shelters that have yielded the remains of occupations ranging from the Middle Paleolithic uh, to the Neolithic. Arcy-sur-Cure, in particular, is a reference site uh, for the European Paleolithic, but it's also historically a major study, study laboratory of prehistorians from the northern half uh, of France, and especially uh, for the CNRS team, prehistoric ethnology, heres to the laboratory founded in 1967 by André Leroy-Gon. Also, the first excavations at Arcy sur Cure date back to the end of the 19th century. It was with the arrival of André Leroy-Gon in 1946 that a real research program was set up on the Arcy sur Cure uh, Saint-Mauré Massif. 
excavations were carried out there from 1946 to 1963, founded um, no, by uh, his team, sorry, then by some of his collaborators or uh, students. Uh, you have uh, Francine David, uh, etc. It's written. Uh, RC Circuit then became a pioneering site for the application and new analyses. And on the other hand, in the application of one of the most innovative approaches for the time, formalized by André Laura Gouran, an ethnology of prehistoric uh, populations. Since uh, 2015 and 16, two new research projects have been initiated, Verarcy and uh, uh, Deux Arc. They were born of an observation, the absence of a general synthesis of the various field operations and studies carried out to date on this massive. And the desire to safeguard the old archives, archives, uh, which are known to be very fragile. This dynamic gave rise to three postdoctoral research projects and a third research project. Our objective was and still is to make the most of the different types of archives available and to produce new ones, excavation archives, sedimentary archives, archaeological archives, and also oral archives. Our aim is better understanding of the history of research and the geological, the paleo-environmental and human history of this massive over the long diachrony. Thinking in this way, this project necessarily takes place over a long period of time, uh, linking archaeology, archival, archival studies, history of science, social anthropology, epistemology, and scientific mediation for the general public. These projects are structured around several objectives. Um, firstly, a conservation objective. Almost uh, 12,000 documents have been digitized and inventoried in a research instrument. This classification plan is directly accessible to all of, uh, to all at the archive department or on the DESARC project website. This work has made it possible to save the photo negatives and the documentation of the excavations carried out between 1946 and 1963 by André Laura Gouron's team. Eight old films on the RC caves have also been digitized. They allow us to discover new or little known face facets of these excavations, uh, the festive life on the side, the first test of molding objects, uh, the methods of excavating the trench spoil, the arduousness of the excavations, etc. We would like to pay tribute to Philippe Soulier, prehistoric archaeologist and science, uh, science historian, who made it possible to inventory, classify, and identify many of these documents. And without him, uh, a whole section of our projects uh, would not have been possible. A second component concerns the collection and production of new data in order to give meaning to the ancient archaeological collection from the RC Samore Massif. It's imperative to overcome the artificial fragmentation from which they suffer by reconstructing their history from the excavation uh, to their current location, uh, place of place of the discovery, year, excavator, donor, etc. We have thus begun the time-consuming work of cataloging the collections, currently visiting six institutions in France and two abroad. An original work of a collection of the memories was also carried out. The aim is to shed light on the hidden face of the history factory by interviewing former excavators from RC Circuit. Nearly uh, 13 hours of recordings were made and transcribed in an exhaustive manner. The accounts cover all the periods of exploitation of the RC Circure site during André Laura Goron's time. Um, this corpus of raw data has been uh, has since been enriched and valorized within the framework of a postdoctoral post research project carried out by uh, me. 
which uh, I discuss uh, after. The official history of this site has been built around the fame of a few individuals, the most famous of whom is André Laurent. And however, in reality, all the people involved in the excavation sites are transmitters of memory. These people, often anonymous, also construct the history of a site and participate directly or indirectly in the construction of knowledge, whether it be scientific, academic, or general public. The, the stakes uh, of this research uh, are therefore based on a cross approach of two human sciences, anthropology, social anthropology, and archaeology. The uh, two other postdoctoral researches led by Alfonso Ramirez Garcia, a Mexican archaeologist and historian, focused on the archives of the Reindeer Cave and the André Leroy Gouron School of Thought and Creation. In the manner of an ethnographic uh, survey, the aim was to reconstruct a history of past scientific practices based on the detailed reconstruction of life on the site and thus to contribute to comparative study of the process of professionalization of prehistoric archaeology during the 14 and 60s. This research focused on the archives of the excavations of the Gravestien and Chateau Peronien levels of the Reindeer Cave. This work um, also made it possible to reconstruct uh, in the form of plants, the various stages of the first excavation campaign in 1949, and in particular to reconstitute a possible habitat floor in a sector of one of the Clarician layers uh, that has remained problematic to this day in the absence of a definitive publication at the time of uh, Lorago. Uh, and for the Chatel Peronian levels, the integrity of which has been the subject of much, uh, much discussion, the aim was to clarify the origins of the techniques for stripping the floors of settlements, which were developed uh, mainly during the RC excava excavations and finally to arrive at the roles and principles of planimetric or ethnographic excavation as they were systematized on the Pinsbon excavation in the 60s and 70s. And the RC archives were also the, the basis uh, for a master thesis. This, was, this work sorry, was, was made uh, possible uh, to carry out for the first time and uh, produced a synthesis of the excavation operations carried out at the Trilobit uh, cave. This work was made uh, possible thanks to unpublished document transmitted by the Musée de la Vallonnais and the family of Pierre Poulain, uh, curator of this museum at the time of uh, Le Ragouin. Uh, finally, the historiography of the RC excavation has also given rise to several short summaries. For example, on the RC caves before Le Ragouin, also on prehistoric ethnology as seen by uh, André Le Wagouin himself. And also the excavation methods are at RC or the progressive exploration of the RC caves by uh, André Le Wagouin also. There are still many texts of course by uh, Philippe Soulier that have not yet been put online, um, but these are intellectual treasure that uh, in the future should be valued and safeguarded of course. Our project also involved the documentation and scientific valorization component. A website uh, was uh, also created, dedicated to the promotion of all the research and promotion action carried out in the framework of the two ARC and their RC projects. Two dynamic maps uh, have thus been created, which uh, will be further developed. One allows you to view about 15 posters about the, the caves. Another map uh, provides information on the collection held in the museums and explanatory notes on the content uh, of the collection. Also, a chronological freeze has also been created, tracing the major stages in the history of research in uh, RC. This research also integrate, uh, integrates a bibliographic database centralizing all uh, documentation relating to RC. 
It also includes those outside the excavation uh, documentation. This documentation has been fully checked, brought up to standard and transferred to Zotero. So this free bibliographic management tool allows searches by authors, by journal, by type of document, etc. Currently, around 290 documents have been uh, harvested. All the references have been enriched with keywords and linked, uh, links sorry, to the complete text, or at least to a location in, the, in a library or an archival collection. And by linking uh, the different chapters of the same book and article from the same uh, conference or so. Uh, bibliographical connection, the RC was also created on the platform of uh, multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary open archive uh, called HAL, which aims at gathering and giving access to all that is deposited here. Our long-term objective is to make an almost exhaustive uh, inventory of the sum of research on the Paleolithic occupation of the cave of Arcy Secure and also Samore Massif. Finally, we also work to have uh, Arcy included in the Grand Site collection of the Ministry of Culture. In parallel with the research on the excavation ar archives dating on the Gravesian uh, bone industry was carried out and new studies were conducted on the food and technical exploitation of the mammoths uh, in the gravation period. This is based on unpublished series of or, or one or two Magdalenian pendants that are quite unique uh, in their kind. Finally, uh, this website also highlights the numerous mediation, uh, mediation action carried out within the framework of the project on RC, about which we will not have uh, not so much time to speak to you, unfortunately, and uh, other than in a few concluding words. Uh, also, various temporary or permanent exhibitions have been held uh, in regional museums, as well as Mediation Days, an art project, a short film, and the children's story. The RC excavation uh, archives offer the opportunity to make the link between past, present, and future. Uh, on this major site of European prehistory. Our projects are also an opportunity to pay tribute to all uh, archaeologists, speleologists, professionals, and of course, amateurs who have kept research on the massive lives uh, for decades. Uh, I will now present an example to illustrate the treatment of archives in social anthropology. This will allow me to discuss the construction of knowledge in relation to the past and to archaeological heritage in particular. I will speak here mainly of narratives about archaeological sites and the biographical accounts of actors who worked uh, there during their careers. These narratives are collected during a key stage of the research, the production of an oral archive. The term oral archives appear in the 70s with the work of sociologist Dominic Aaron Schnapper. Here is how, the mana uh, here is, uh, how she managed to characterize the originality of the work of those she designates as oral archivists, whether they are anthropologists, sociologists, ethnologists, political scientists, or historians. She says, to constitute an oral archive is not only to collect already existing documents, the work of the archivist, nor to do the work of, his, of a historian, the one who analyzes and interprets, but to elaborate oral documents, even if they are transcribed, they keep the oral form, and to replace or, no, uh, or complete non-existent or incomplete written documents. So also it is intended to collect contemporary voices. These data concern both the community of archaeologists and prehistorians in particular, and that of the social sciences interested in these questions. I'm thinking here uh, of the field of heritage studies. This step therefore logically and formally followed the questions uh, of access and use of archives when the latter pre-exists the research projects that use them. 
this growing and multidisciplinary interest in the underlying issues related to the production of new data, in prehistory in this case, is largely explained by the movement to open up scientific data for the human and social sciences. It covers one, legal issues on the right to use and disseminate data, two, epistemological issues on the critical knowledge that a scientific discipline produce about itself, uh, three, ethical issues and the place to be reserved for the actors linked to the data produced, whether they are informants, right holders, individuals filmed, etc. And um, for technical issues on the possibilities of setting, in, uh, setting up a management plan. Uh, before presenting in a few words, my research uh, involving heritage data, I must specify that it is oral archives and that this type of data is globally surrounded by problematic elements, a legal vagueness linked to questions of intellectual and moral property, the availability for re-exploitation and multiplicity of actors. These problems are summarized by the questions posed by the scientist Florence Descombs, who work on this type of intangible archive and the history of organization as a lecturer at the PHU in France. She says, what are the rights of the producer of oral archives? What are those of the witness? Uh, what are those of the interviewer? What are those of the disseminator or publish publisher? Um, my research in social anthropology is at the crossroads of work on the individual and on the audiovisual. I produce qualitative data that are primary and produce. I will return to this distinction later. I will not talk about the data produced during the research I conducted during uh, my uh, the PhD between 1912 and 19, uh, 2012 and 2018, sorry, but rather the data produced in the post-doctorate I carried out between November 2019 and January 2021 as part of a contract funded by the Ile-de-France region. My postdoctoral research has been uh, has since been a continuation of my research with prehistoric archaeologists. It focuses on an uh, epistemological and historical questions concerning the birth and uh, development of a French style prehistory inherited from Loragon, André Loragon from November uh, to January uh, 2021, 20, in connection with the aforementioned project Desarc, I have investigated the actors, excavators, archaeologists, and amateurs who worked uh, in the caves of arcy sur cure uh, between 1946 and 1963 in order to constitute a set of administrative documents that will fit the archaeological aspects that the research on the site has allowed uh, to build up until then. Um, among the primary data, um, there are data corresponding to the rushes of film interviews conducted within the framework of the Anthropark project mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Uh, I extend these interviews to the scale of the prehistoric ethnology team so future UMR ton, by realizing corpus for the Presterian members uh, of this team, which is the hair of the one originally funded by the Presterian André Le Ragouron. Among the data produced, there is data corresponding to the editing of the filmed uh, interviews. This is built on the basis of a thematic chaptering with integrated time code and is linked to a chronic thematic file produced in PDF and exhaustive transcriptions of the interviews. The first step in the constitution of my audiovisual is to establish a contract of trust with my interlocutors by drawing up a written and standardized request for authorization to capture and broadcast images and sound. This specifies 
the archival and regulated vocation of the data produced in connection with the service uh, concern, the vocation to be produced for public distribution and reproduction, all types of public representation of the data produced are list here, with the possibility of communicating the recordings to the public sphere, public projection, television broadcasting, etc. And the formal prohibition to infringe on the privacy or reputation, dignity or integrity of the person. The second step consisted in developing a data management plan since it involved building the uh, tree structure of primary data and the various data produced from them, transcript interviews, etc. The creation of the dissemination of the data collected from the actors uh, must quickly arise as well as the need to facilitate their reuse and dissemination on a national and international scale. In my case, I turn to the elaboration of a data management plan, um, DMP in English, I think so, developed uh, within the framework of a working group to the TGIR Humanum Consortium, uh, memories of archaeologists and archaeological sites, yeah, it's, it's ma massa, from an initial version produced at the uh, Institut National de Recherche en Archaeologie Préventive in uh, 2018. Born at the, the end of 2012, Massa's objective is to connect scientific actors in archaeology uh, in France. This DMP uh, integrates the main standards and recommendations applicable to archaeology, as well as links to reference documentation that prove extremely valuable through uh, its online writing. The templates, uh, template makes data entry accessible, both in terms of its clearly prioritized interface and the brief, clear recommendations that serve as a guide. To know more about this subject, I refer you to a post that I wrote um, on this subject and uh, that you can find on HAL, H -A -L, uh, at this reference here. It's not it. The future Emerton currently carries the heritage of major archaeological sites for the understanding of prehistoric populations, and the site of Malara accounts among them alongside Pelsbon, for example more specifically as one of the most important in the Levant uh, for the ancient periods. If it is essential today to continue the development of the collection of already existing documents, the work of the archivist, as well as the analysis and interpretation, the work of the historian, uh, the production of oral documents, even if they are transcribed, they keep the oral form, can complete non-existent or incomplete written documents and reintroduce uh, research terms that only an oral archivist approach in social science can approach. If my mission consists in of talking to the main actors of the site for hours in hand, it is because it's very focus and this collection of data allows me to address fundamental epistemological questions that will serve to better understand the influence of the work and methods of the French prehistory school on the international scene right up to the present day Israel in this case. I will say a few words about this later with Fanny Bocantin. Thank you. I will uh, continue and end this uh, exploration of our research project. I'm sure it makes a, already a lot of information um, by recalling that there are, of course, no neutral uh, archives which would exist by themselves independently of uh, the socio-historical context in which they were produced, then preserved, or even valued. Whatever their nature, uh, search book, uh, plans, survey, photographs, film, letters, uh, etc., archives are the um, more or less precise witnesses of the people and uh, peoples and societies who created and exploited them. Um, this preliminary observation obviously finds a particular echo in the region of the world where the develop development of archaeology. Uh, as a discipline uh, at the end of the 19th century, coincide with the establishment and assertion of uh, colonial powers. 
This is, for example, the, word, the, the case in West Africa, in, uh, in Senegal and the Gambia, two now independent and uh, sovereign country, but whose recent history and geography were directly shaped by the French and the uh, English colonial empire. Uh, Senegal and the Gambia offer interesting example as archaeological research was uh, particularly dynamic uh, in these two countries during the, the 19th and uh, 20th uh, century, mainly because of nearly 20,000 uh, megalithic funerary architecture present uh, on these territories. First explanatory, exploratory sorry, uh, works made by amateurs and members of the colonial uh, administrations were gradually replaced by more scientific and uh, methodological approach. Furthermore, the development of archaeology also benefited, at least in Senegal, uh, from a very favorable institutional framework with the creation, uh, for example, in uh, 1936, of a multidisciplinary research center, uh, l'Institut Français uh, d'Afrique Noire, uh, now, which now became with the independence, uh, l'Institut Fondamental d'Afrique Noire, uh, and also, for example, the Theodore Monod Museum in, uh, in Dakar, but also from uh, the creation of uh, various scientific journals uh, dedicated to, to research, uh, different research uh, thematics. So here my, my purpose is not to expose the result of a specific research focusing on the archaeological archive, but rather to, um, I would like to illustrate uh, maybe our researcher, uh, archaeologist and ethno-archaeologist uh, in my case, can gradually be led to uh, consider with more and more interest uh, the diversity of archival sources and the range of questionings they bring. Um, the development of such a research on archives, on archaeological archives, would thus continue uh, the epistemological and historiographical uh, movement initiated uh, particularly from the uh, 90s uh, by the publication of several works, uh, several research works focusing on the context of production of knowledge in uh, Africa uh, during the colonial period. However, this uh, reflexive approach mainly uh, focused uh, on history and ethnology, leaving, for example, a discipline such as uh, archaeology somewhat uh, on the, on the sidelines. However, um, for example, Pekka, Pekka Masonen's book uh, describing uh, the invention and conceptualization of uh, medieval uh, Sahelian empires uh, encounter uh, a really significant and important success and show, uh, and show the, the need to multiply uh, such approaches in, in this uh, region of the world. Uh, one step in this direction is uh, digitizing and placing online uh, with free and unrestricted access. Uh, the Raymond Moniz archives, a famous Africanist archaeologist and historian, um, who was also a researcher at the IFAN Institute presented uh, before, uh, between 1947-1962. He was also uh, then a professor of medieval African history uh, at the Sorbonne University. So this, this accessible online fund is a uh, so it's really important uh, documents for, for research. But these uh, famous figures of research alone do not sum up the archaeological research carried out uh, in Senegal and the Gambia for more than a century, of course. Uh, other people less emblematic or on an international scale have nevertheless significantly contributed to the development of, uh, of knowledge in, in these areas. In Senegal, for example, this is the case of uh, Guy Tillemans, uh, who published in 1970 uh, first synthesis on the diversity of Senegalese uh, megalithism based on uh, unpublished uh, archaeological data. Uh, so from two, 20, uh, two, 2008, uh, the starting of a new archaeological program on Senegambian megalithism by uh, Franco-Senegalese team directed by Luc Laporte and Amadi Bokum gradually led uh, to explore some of Guy Tillman's original documentation uh, stored in Dakar. Our experience here of uh, fieldwork during 
uh, more than a decade uh, allowed us to start this approach and to shed new light on ancient uh, archaeological context. It does to test some of, uh, of the hypothesis and observation relating to the structure of megalithic monument or the funerary practice. This first and uh, preliminary exploration of uh, Gittilman's archive here only from uh, photographs, uh, I, I confess, represent, represented a precious feedback uh, for us because the approach then responded to precise archaeological question resulting from uh, nearly 10 years of excavation in this country and on this structure. Um, Gittelman's pictures, uh, for example, uh, revealed uh, several human, human concentration and show uh, the contours of uh, burial pit uh, undetected, undetected uh, at that time, but we uh, we highlighted uh, the, during the, the last years. Um, a broader consideration uh, of archaeological archives extended to other researchers and other sites uh, would need to be developed uh, in the continuing uh, in the coming years uh, in this both uh, region. Uh, this approach would be of significant interest, for example, for a site published, uh, but for which some contextual question uh, still persist, for example, in the Senegambian megalithic context, but also for unpublished sites, and there are a lot, <laughs> and yet sometimes of uh, major interest, for example, all shell, shell mounds uh, excavated by Guy Tillmans on the Atlantic coast uh, in the Salum Delta. But also, finally, to describe how archaeological research uh, was organized on site, uh, but also how scientific ideas were elaborated or uh, and, uh, at the institutional level. Um, Luc Laporte and uh, Jean-Paul Cross, uh, two members of the research archaeological team, made a step in this direction uh, during a few stay in, uh, in Dakar at the IFAN were photographs on the glass plates uh, dating from the first decade of the 20th century had been scanned and uh, digitalized. These unpublished and uh, original documents offer a new perspective on the exploration and survey carried out at the time by colonial agents uh, and the conditions also uh, in which uh, research uh, took place. Um, Several ethnographic photograph collections were also consulted to put uh, into perspective the archaeological data uh, on funeral and ritual practices with the modern period. I found, uh, the, the IFAN, uh, digital collection of the Musée du Quai Branly here in uh, France, in, in Paris, uh, but also mobilizing a network of uh, private postcard collection, uh, which is also very in in interesting. Uh, however, this approach raises, uh, of course, several and important questions like uh, the location of archives, unevenly distributed between uh, different countries uh, and institutions like uh, research, muse research centers, museums, national archives, and so on, and also private collections. This dimension is critical if we consider archaeological archives often detained by private persons such as archaeologists, if they are still alive, or their descendants. Uh, a second point, the contemporary strategies developed by different actors, such as museum, research centers, university, or national libraries, to collect, preserve, and uh, value such documentation. I will uh, shortly and uh, illustrate. <laughs> <laughs> I will shortly <laughs> illustrate this, uh, this with the example of the Gambian authorities uh, who coordinates all research carried out uh, on its territory by granting, for example, a research permit and uh, ensuring the constitution of archives by requesting uh, a copy of all the documentation gathered uh, during fieldwork, uh, such as uh, notes, photographs, investig investigation files, and so on. So, of course, these data in this, con in this context uh, remain confidential for a few years, normally allowing um, 
enough time for the risk for researcher to publish it. Uh, but this documentation uh, and particularly uh, during the field work uh, also raises specific issues uh, depending uh, uh, depending on, on the on the, the topic of research. Um, but data collected direct during ethnographic surveys uh, can thus include uh, sensitive, really sensitive uh, data uh, to which confidentiality clauses deserve to be really affixed, uh, at least for several decades, such as, such as here on the left, uh, where you have lists of uh, name of uh, people in specific villages or so, uh, the identity of uh, people uh, surveyed uh, here must, must, remain, uh, must remain confidential for their uh, for their safety. Yeah. Uh, this is, for example, the case uh, of uh, large censuses drawn up in may, uh, many communities uh, in uh, ethnographic context. And uh, I will I will stop on this uh, on this point. I, I'm sure it's it's sort of already make a, a lot of uh, information. Thanks a lot uh, for your attention. Ah, Julien, on t'entend pas. Je... I'm sorry, Julien, we did not hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for this introductory presentation. Uh, it was very, very interesting and we can show all the potential of archives in terms of uh, archaeological and historical science, but as well uh, mediation. Uh, as everyone, I suspect I have many questions an idea, but uh, I think we are quite late, so uh, we will keep all of this uh, question uh, for the discussion. Uh, we will uh, do now the next presentation uh, made by uh, Elisabeth Belon, Julie Besnet, and Erwan Legueux, which will present the, the Jean Perrault's archives, uh, which are currently preserved at the MSH Monde in Nanterre. Adrien, si tu peux... Euh, ah oui, arrêtez le partage. Ouais. Et, et maintenant, je. Ouais. And so, please try as much as possible to respect uh, to respect the time. It's, uh, it's I can't uh, do any sign from here. It's it's quite difficult. So. Okay. So Julie. Yeah. Um... Okay, so uh, good morning to all of you. Um, in this talk, I will briefly present uh, Jean Perrault's archives, which are kept as the uh, archives service of uh, the MSH uh, ou, uh, or Maison des Sciences de l'Homme Monde in Nanterre near uh, Paris. My colleagues, Elisabeth Béon and uh, Erwan Neugut are unable to be here today and they uh, apologize uh, for that. So Jean Perrault is one of the best known uh, French archeologists and the archeology span of the Near East. He was recruited by the CNRS in 1947 and uh, he was a founder of uh, the Centre Français de Recherche à Jérusalem. He directed uh, numerous excavations in Israel, many on site dating uh, from uh, the Epipyroitic to the Bronze Age. In 1967, he was nominated by the French Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs as director of the French archaeological delegation in Iran and he also became director of the archaeological mission of Susa. Uh, from that moment on, he took over from Roman Girschman and he supervised the excavation in Susa uh, until 1979, the year of the Iranian revolution. During uh, the last years of his life, Jean Perrault was a member as an honorary research director of the laboratory Arscan, and this is why his scientific archives were transferred 
to the archive service of uh, the Maison des Sciences de Homme uh, Monde in Nanterre. Um, beginning in 1998, Jean Perrault made three transfers of archives that corresponded mainly to the feed documentation of the excavation he had directed in Susa. Uh, after his death, uh, three other transfers were made by his families and colleagues. Uh, there were documents corresponding to the work he had carried out uh, in Israel, as well as his publications document. In 2013, uh, the Centre Français de Recherche at Jerusalem also made an important transfer of, Afka, of archives that uh, completed uh, Jean Perrault Fond, already kept at uh, the Maison des Sciences de Homme Monde in Nanterre. Finally, in 2020, Mrs. Yora Koska Horvitz kindly agreed to donate the excavation catalogues that had uh, been given to her many years ago by uh, Jean Perrault himself. So according to French education, Jean Perrault's scientific archives are considered as public archives. Indeed, the documents uh, produced by a researcher working in a public institution within the framework of his of, or her professional activity are considered to be public archives, regardless of uh, their medium. Uh, public archives are free accessible to the public once the archival process of classification has been completed. Uh, concerning the reuse of public information, it is free of charge, provided that the origin is mentioned on the integrity of the information and any intellectual property right attached to the documents are respected. So today, the archival process uh, has been uh, completed for nearly 50% of Jean Perrault archives that have been transferred to uh, the Maison des Sciences de, de Homme Monde Archive Service. This corresponds to nearly 40 linear meters. Um, and about 50% of the document are uh, still being processed. Now concerning the document whose archival process has already been completed, uh, then consists of a font divided into two series, each of which is divided into two sub-series. The first series corresponds to the direction of the French Archaeological Mission in Israel, and it contains all the documents corresponding to the research activity carried out by Jean Perrault as a director of excavations. Uh, for this moment, the archive, this archive series includes uh, only two sub-series, but uh, should eventually be completed by new sub-series corresponding to the excavation directed by Jean Perrault on other Israeli archaeological sites. Um, the first sub-series corresponds to the excavation at En Maera and Bezamun Maera. It consists mainly of four excavation notebooks, 350 plans, sections and drawings, five catalogues, near, nearly 7,000 photographic documents, and 13 excavation reports. The archival process of the document from Jean Perrault excavation at Maera was carried out in 2017 and 2018 by Erwan Neugut within the framework of the archival and documentary project called uh, Collection of Sources. The interest of this project was to gather the archives and documents related to the excavation of Natufian sites. The second subseries corresponds to the excavation at Munrata. The archival process of the document and uh, the digitization program of the uh, archives was carried out in 2020 
by me under the supervision of Isabelle Beon within the framework of the ANR project Serastone directed by Julien Vuguet. The second yard the activities, it is also divided to this day into two sub-series. The first one corresponds to the document produced in the context of uh, Jean Perrault's function as director of the French archaeological delegation in Iran, and it consists of management and administrative documents as well as professional and scientific letters. The second subseries contains all the documents from the archaeological excavation directed by Jean Perrault in Susa and its surroundings. It is an extremely important collection of several tens of thousands of documents. The field documentation is organized as originally by excavated area, the plan of Susa, the Acropolis of Susa, the Royal City, the Apadana, the Shaur Place, the Artisan Tepe, or the modern city of Susa. It can be noted that uh, the system of recording of the free data is the same as that Jean Perrault developed in the late 50s for the prehistoric sites in Israel. So there are excavation notebooks that contain a description of each locus, as well as field observation made during the excavation. Uh, there is also uh, the excavation catalog that used the excavation artificial unit on the object discovered. The location of each unit is, is indicated on, that, uh, on the corresponding graphic journals. And the graphic journals uh, uh, is a general plan uh, of, the of the structure being excavated by, by day. And the uh, locus and catalog number are also indicated on their plans. So, um, next one, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next. <laughs> ah, I don't know why it's okay. So uh, if you are interested in learning more about uh, Jean Perrault's archives, uh, you can consult or download the detailed inventories of the MSH Monde website, or you can write to the email address that appears at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Julie and Elizabeth and everyone for this, uh, this presentation. I think now we have a better overview of computer archives, which are stored at the MSH Monde in Nanterre. Um, maybe we can uh, now have the presentation of Chloe Rosner, and then we will have some time for the final uh, discussion with, with Francois and, uh, and Jan. I don't know, Chloe. Oui. So Chloe is here with us. Mais je vais pas mettre la caméra sur mon C'est pas très. C'est pas très. Ça me filme bizarrement. Et moi, je... Et moi, je... C'est mieux pour toi. Oui, oui. Okay. Et comment je fais pour partager la langue mon écran, le. Il est ouvert ton compte Ouais. Ah oui, ok. Ouais. D'accord. Ouais. 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 Je vais un nouvel ordi, donc ah bah oui, on voit. C'est bon. OK. So, hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'll present some of the general considerations. 
Ah, it's not open. Sorry. Uh, on bas à droite. Full screen. Ah oui, oui, oui. oui. Comment oui, J'ai un, un nouvel ordi, alors je suis. Je... Yes. Ah. Ok, super. Thank you. So I'll present here some of the general considerations guiding a postdoctoral project that is currently in construction, which directly stems from my doctoral di dissertation that I presented in January 2020. My PhD research focused on the social, cultural, and political history of proto-Israeli and Israeli archaeology. It was based on uh, archival studies. Uh, I first reconstructed the history of Israeli archaeological inst institutions, such as the Israeli Exploration Society and the personal and professional trajectories of their members and networks. It was then possible to interrogate differently the role played by archaeology in the shaping of a Zionist and an Israeli identity and the construction of Palestine Israel as a homeland. So my current project focuses on the French archaeologist and founder of the French Research Center, Jean Perrault, and the history of prehistory in Israel. So by drawing upon his personal and professional trajectory, uh, by drawing upon his personal and professional trajectory, I wish to address the part played by French actors and institutions in the shaping of Israeli archaeology in general, and more specific, specifically prehistory, pre Israeli prehistory, which emerged after 1948. So a lot of the ideas that I'll present today are only hypotheses, and everything is in construction. I'm also very new to the field of uh, prehistory, so... Uh, at the heart of this project are archives, as hinted in the title, which is also a reference to Jean Perrault's memoirs that I will quote uh, several times during this presentation called Et il sortir du paradis. Uh, and uh, I have consult, and it's based on archives that I've uh, consulted during my PhD, but also that I have consulted at the Maison d'Archéologie et d'Ethnologie à Nanterre. But on the long run, I wish to cross-check them with different records in France and in Jerusalem, such as with the archives of the Hebrew University and its Institute of Archaeology, also with the Arch Archive National in France, and also with archives housed uh, in the Rockefeller Museum. So this project, this project falls into the future uh, UMR ton that Gwendoline presented, and also uh, uh, Fanny Bocantan's ANR project that she will present later on. So Jean Perrault arrived in British Mandate Palestine at the end of the Second World War. He rapidly came in close contact with the French archaeological representatives uh, in Jerusalem at the time, such as Le Père de Vaux and Le Père Vincent, he excavated in Tel Farah in 1946. He was at the time a boursier of the Ecole Biblique. He also met René Neuville, who returned to Jerusalem in 1946, and who, as most of you know, significantly con contributed to the de development of prehistorical research in the Levant and French archaeology in general. Indeed, French archaeological activities in Palestine were quite scarce because they were concentrated in areas under the French mandate. So Palestine was a bit on the margins. In parallel, Jean Perrault built through his personal relations, connections with the proto-Israeli archeologists such as Binyamin Mazar, Igre Eliadin, and also PLO Guy, who will work uh, in the Israeli administration of antiquities after 1948. So a lot of my postdoctoral projects will concern Jean Perrault's personal and professional networks in Palestine, but and in Israel after 1948, and also in France. Um, since the first explorations, uh, archaeological explorations of the Holy Land in since the 19th century, 
amateurs of antiquities and scholars gathered and progressively settled in Jerusalem, building institutions, housing their collections like the Père Germer Durand, organizing conferences at the École Biblique or courses. Then during the British mandate, the Holy City housed the main foreign archaeological institutions such as the current Albright Institute, the École Biblique and Archaeologique Française, and also the British School of Archaeology. In 1947, numerous talks about a possible archaeological collaboration in the case of the creation of two states and the internalization of Jerusalem took place. But after different events following the creation of the State of Israel in 1948, the split of the foreign archaeological scene was confirmed. Most of the foreign institutions decided to maintain their headquarters in the east of the city, behind the Green Line. In the, in the context of the war of 1948 and the French-Israeli, the first, sorry, Israeli air war, Jean Perrault pursued his work. He studied Neuville's prehistoric collections and excavated in the early 1950s at Bouboche. Revealing his potential as a, as a successful archaeologist, as René Neuville recommends um, Jean Perrault for a bourse uh, de recherche at the CNRS. I will not uh, translate it, but uh, if you want to share it, so if you want to read it. And also, uh, I found in the archives of the MS, MSH some of his pictures from Abu Ghosh in the 1950s and a very interesting document of uh, the workers that he employed on his excavations, the contract that they had to sign uh, after receiving their paycheck. And you can see on the left or on uh, the, a letter from Le Père uh, Vincent uh, after Jean Perrault sent him his uh, report on Abu Ghosh where he says that he feels like he's not uh, specialized enough in prehistory, pre and he is very glad that Jean Perrault is pursuing uh, on this uh, in this field. So, a promising uh, archaeologist already. After 1948, uh, Jean Perrault also maintained Neuville's contacts with scholars from the Hebrew University, especially in the context of the resumption of the work in Um El Katafa after 1948. So I think maybe I would be very happy if some of you can identify people on the, these pictures, but I believe that some of them are members of the Hebrew University, such as I think uh, George Haas or uh, Leo Picard maybe, but I think they are mostly from the Hebrew University, which shows that um, Jean Perrault fostered this French-Israeli collaboration after uh, 1948. So, through Jean Perrault, René Neuville's heritage was maintained during the first pre prehistoric activities led in the new state of Israel uh, as early as 1949. I can quote, for example, Shara Golan, excavated by Shtekelis. And uh, more generally, uh, through Jean Perrault, we can see that a French school of thought in prehistory was still present. Uh, also, again, through the tra trajectory of Moshe Shtekelis, who also worked with Neville and was in close contact with Labé Breuil, who encouraged the study, for example, of the artifact <coughs> of Bakar Efaim that uh, Shtekelis published an article after 1948 on the subject. This French connection lived through Shtekelis' students, such as Ofer Bar Yosef, and so on until today. So also after 1948, in order to resume archeological work in Israel, a lot had to be reconstructed, such as a new archeological department of antiquities able to deliver permits and also supervise excavations. The first year of this department were not easy for several reasons, which I will not address in detail, but the lack of funds was one of the biggest constraints. This went one, hand in hand with a lack of personnel and trained archaeologists across the country. On top of it, 
the, the state of Israel was during its first years flooded by immigrants and had to be developed on different levels in order to absorb, absorb them, as the Israeli term is. The numerous destructions and reconstruction and constructions taking place in the first years of the state led by the new government affected archaeological activity as Emmanuel Bendor, vice director of the Israeli <coughs> Department of Antiquities and Museums, informs the Bureau of Education and Culture in 1951. I quote here, the great Aliyah has led to the disappearance and destruction of antiquities across the country. The buildings of new settlements near archaeological sites affects their states. Soundings should be done before they are built. In fact, Moshe Shtekelis regrets during one of the first archaeological boards that during the coding of a road between Tel Aviv and Netanya, 24 prehistoric sites were destroyed, even though he had received the approval for their excavations by the new Israeli Department of Antiquities. So in order also to resume archaeological research in Israel after 1948, the new state, the new government and uh, director of the Department of Antiquities decided to promote foreign expeditions in the country. Because as I said before, most of the archaeologists decided to stay behind the Green Line in East Jerusalem. So in a letter to the Department of Public Works in September 1948, Shmuel Yevin, who was the first director of the department, writes, it is difficult to assume that any foreign expedition will be able to excavate in the state of Israel as long as it will have to pay such high wages to daily workers. Whereas in the air part of the land of Israel and in neighboring countries, one may pay a quarter of this wage and even less to a daily worker. On the other hand, no governmental budget can support the general activities of excavations on its own. Moreover, this is undesired scientifically for all are keen to participate with scientists from other nations in large scale research of the antiquity of, of the land. Even the na national scientific societies are not enough and they also do not have very large sums of money at their disposal to carry on the shoulders the whole burden of archaeological exploration. With time, people will not pay attention to the fact that the high wages are involved, but will acquire the, the impression that Jews do not allow, allow foreign teams to work in their region. The reason for the absence of foreign expeditions can be found also in the current political situation in the region, for example, Jean Perrault notes that for diplomatic reasons, he could not say his scientific activities were partially funded by the CNRS and the Commission, Commission des Fouilles Archaeologiques of the Foreign Affairs Ministry. In 1953, the Commission informed the French consul in Jerusalem that because the Commission funds and works in Arab countries, it would be inappropriate to re reveal that Jean Perrault's relationship with the Commission. They would rather name it the Mission du Consulat Général de France à Jérusalem, therefore not mentioning Israel. In order to encourage foreigners to resume their excavations, the Department of Antiquities, with the approval of the Ministry of Education, published an open letter in the 1950s in which it offered every foreign archaeological expedition a subsidy amounting up to two thirds of its expenditure on additional wages, up to around 2000 work hours per season. So Jean Perrault benefited from this, uh, this, uh, this program, and, but he also felt that it was not uh, in this letter that he sends to, um, uh, who, to, the, invest, to the Israeli uh, Department of Antiquities, but also he writes a note to, uh, to the cultural attache of the um, French embassy. It was advantageous, but it was not on the long run uh, if he wanted to um, organize long periods of excavations, is what the letter is. It's, it's, it was helpful, but not if you wanted to work for long, on the long term and not in a, uh, like a very rapid excavation. So Jean Perrault also benefited from the numerous activities of amateur archaeologists which were encouraged by the Department of Antiquities as a means to explore the country and prevent damage to antiquities. 
he writes in his memoirs that he was led to the site of Abu Matar, the author, the architect of the Beersheba municipality, and David Alon, a member close to the, near, the nearby kibbutz. Lastly, he in the Beersheba area, Abu Matar Safedi, of the development of the region, which was linked to a settlement plan in the Negev, who was particularly dear to Ben Goyon's heart. It's, and also he benefited, which was very common at the time, of the help of the army, as we can see in this uh, picture, and also of um, like volunteers from kibbutzim nearby. It's interesting to note that in parallel, Nelson Gluck, who was also one of the only foreign archaeologists with Jean Perrault in the region, in working in Israel at the time, he was also leading an expedition uh, in the Negev. Gluck, in the framework of this expedition, I will not quote some of his uh, interpretations or clearly put his archaeological endeavors to the service of, of Israeli interests. And he also founded a school dedicated to archaeology in Jerusalem, similarly as Jean Perrault, who, as he became more active in the field, encouraged the establishment of a permanent archaeological mission in Israel. The Mission Archéologique Française was a way to perpetuate a French archaeological presence in uh, the region and in extension, maintaining the role of archaeology as a source of French cultural influence. It also revealed the international dimension of French prehistoric research at the time. So here you can see uh, these were the, on the, the first uh, facilities of the Mission Permanente uh, in Apalmar, which were in Jean Perrault's house. And then here is one of the buildings in Abu Matar of uh, uh, the Mission Archaeologique Française. Uh, this, the, this approach of my uh, work about uh, the history of the French Research Center through Jean Perrault uh, completes other research perspectives, such as those of Gwendoline Torreira that she will develop later on. It will uh, also allow to question the role of Jean Perrault as a French archaeologist and the French archaeological mission created in the beginning of the 1950s in the shaping of Israeli prehistory. A, dis a discipline which is also institu institu which is also in construction after 1948. In fact, it's only after that period that Moshe Shtekulis managed to uh, offer a place to prehistory at the Hebrew University, establishment, establishing the Department of Prehistory in the 1950s. Uh, so I, I hope to, um, to dig deeper into the creation of the Department of Prehistory at the Hebrew University in, uh, in connection with my work that I did during my PhD about the history of archaeology at the Hebrew University since its establishment. And in general, Jean Perrault was highly involved in the Israeli Antiquities Administration, as I saw in some of the archives. <coughs> he was in close contact with important figures at the time. This led him to the participation in the excavations of Chatzor alongside a new generation of Israeli archaeologists. So even though Jean Perrault didn't share the sense this the Igel Yadin sensationalism and the influence of the biblical narrative on his presentation of his finds. He wasn't exempt from the fascination associated with the archaeological finds in Israel. Indeed, Jean Perrault did not hesitate to make parallels with the biblical narrative in the introduction of his memoir. In memoirs, I will not uh, translate, but he's saying basically that uh, the biblical narrative is not so different from uh, Pre the advancement of what prehistoric research has shown about the first uh, uh, civilizations. I think he was probably conscious that the biblical that the biblical in the biblical interests of the general public when it came to archaeology in Palestine, he was playing on these ambiguities. And this paradoxical idea of prehistory in the Holy Land can be found in the name of the exhibition, Les Premiers Hommes au Pays de la, de la Bible, that you can see the, 
uh, on the PowerPoint, uh, <coughs> the poster, which was a traveling exhibition organized for the 40th anniversary of the French uh, Center, which deserves uh, uh, proper research, uh, which we were thinking about with Eva <coughs> it's not with here, uh, which, which was both a means of presenting the progress made by prehistoric research in Israel, in France, but also to um, uh, underline the role played by France in this development. Therefore, underlining, uh, I think, the potential of archaeology as a cultural diplomatic tool. And this is not the only moment Jean Perrault was involved in transmitting archaeology to a broader public. He was also uh, inter he was also getting mixed up in archaeology and politics when he was asked by the Israeli army on several occasions to produce booklets for uh, about prehistorical uh, archaeological sites. I didn't put the letter, but I found a letter by Moshe Mao. Uh, and also he was uh, keen to uh, invite many visitors on his uh, excavation, excavation sites. Moshe Charet, uh, who really wanted uh, to <coughs> present him, who Jean Perrault writes in his memoirs, uh, avait tenu à marquer par une visite officielle son intérêt pour la présence d'une mission française. J'étais alors le seul étranger à fouiller en Israël. Uh, so Moshe Jarret really wanted to come uh, in, uh, in, in this excavation. In this excavation, also the David Touviau, the Bersheva mayor came, Shmuel Levine, and Moshe Dayan. So I, I hope that through this presentation, I've uh, uh, showed you some of the questions which support my project. And uh, I hope that I have also showed that by consulting various archives, it can be possible to answer questions such as, what was Jean Perrault's role in the transmission of prehistory to a broad public in Israel, but also abroad? Did prehistoric ar prehistorical archaeology play a specific role uh, in uh, the first years of the state of Israel, et cetera, et cetera? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chloe. It was a very great presentation and it shows uh, the importance of uh, Jean Perrault in, in prehistoric archaeology in, uh, in Israel. Uh, of course, we are quite late, so I don't know maybe if uh, Francois and Yann, if you want to say some words and maybe we can uh, raise some, some few questions before the coffee break. Um, just a few words, uh, not for 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 for, uh, for uh, just for congratulating all uh, the speakers, um, and maybe uh, uh, it, it it will be more useful to to give the <clears throat> to take some time for question from uh, uh, Israeli friends uh, and keep time for the end of the discussion, the end of the... Okay. No? Nope. Francois, what do you think? No, I, I, I know, I, I agree. First of all, I would like to, to say how I'm very, very, very deeply happy to be among you and to see uh, a lot of, uh, of faces that I, I'm, I'm very pleased to see, even if some scream are, are still black now, but uh, anyway. Uh, no, it's it's a great pleasure. I think uh, Jan, Jan, Jan has, uh, is right. Maybe we can keep the the, the, the general discussion for the end of, of the end. And, and but now maybe if someone has some uh, particular question, it could be very interesting also to to. Uh... Is there some questions? Because. When I saw the first uh, presentation, and uh, you know, the, um, mainly focused on Le Roi Gouran archives, uh, probably someone already had the idea, but I think it would be it would be quite interesting to compare uh, how Le Roi Gouran and Jean Perrault, more or less at the same time, build their schools because. Uh, 
okay, there is some common aspect, but uh, as you probably know, Le Roi Goron and John Perrault School are, are quite as well different. And I, I think it would be quite interesting how two very great archaeologists, a French one actually, uh, Develop different uh, different school, and I think uh, I think it would be a very a very nice project to 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 compare Le Roi Gorin and and Jean Perrault uh, archives. This is uh, one of the idea, and the other one it's mainly for Gwendolyn. I think it's it's great to interview the archaeologists who <laughs> who actually excavate with uh, with Le Roi Gorin, and it would be so nice to do the same. Uh, work with the one who excavated with Jean Perrault because I exchanged uh, a lot with several, uh, you know, Israeli archaeologists uh, who knew uh, Jean Perrault quite well, and they gave many stories, very interesting ones, and not only from a scientific point of view, but as well from an administrative or institutional uh, point of view. So it would be, I think, uh, quite nice if you after the COVID, if you could come here to interview some Israeli colleagues, I think it would be a, a very nice uh, project.